Really great of you to join me again, physics people. It's, uh, it's great to watch these videos and try and build an understanding of physics, especially for those students studying VCE Unit 3 physics at the moment. Today's video will be looking at magnetic flux, and in particular how to use the equation to calculate magnetic flux. So let's jump straight into it. Magnetic flux is given the symbol phi. And I use a little b there as a subscript because there's other forms of fluxes measured in physics as well. It is the measure of the amount of magnetic field lines passing through an area. And when we say area, we're quite often talking about the loop or a coil of metal. Our equation is magnetic flux is equal to B times A. Where phi is the symbol used to measure magnetic flux, and of course that's measured in Weber. B is the magnetic field strength measured in Tesla, and A is the area that is perpendicular to the magnetic field, and that is measured simply in meter squared. And to clarify, one Weber is equal to one Tesla meter squared. So here we have a copper coil. We have an area that's colored in nice and red here, mild red. And here comes our magnetic field strength represented by the field lines, B being the symbol for magnetic field strength. And at the moment, these magnetic field lines are coming in perpendicular to this area. Visually, you could explain this as saying that the magnetic field B is threading through the area A. It's a nice way of understanding magnetic flux as field lines thread through an area of a coil. I've got a couple of examples to look at, some simple ones. So example one, calculate the magnetic flux created by a magnetic field strength of 200 millitesla passing through a square frame of sides 20 centimeters as shown below. So here's our square frame and we have these magnetic field lines coming through perpendicular to the surface area of that coil. So just to recap, magnetic field is perpendicular to the area of the coil so therefore we can calculate the magnetic flux by simply multiplying the field strength in Tesla by the area in meters squared. So let's do that now. So first of all, we want to find the magnetic flux. That's our question. The magnetic field strength is 200 millitesla. And of course, milli is by 10 to the negative three. So it's 200 by 10 to the negative three Tesla. The length of this particular square frame is 20 centimeters. That must be converted into meters before we calculate the overall area. So the length of each side of this square frame is 0.20 of a meter, giving us an area of 0.2 by 0.2 or 0.04 meters squared. The equation to work out this magnetic flux from a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of the coil is as such. Magnetic flux phi equals B times A. So we substitute in our values 200 milli tesla and 0.04 of a meter squared, and we end up with a magnetic flux of 0.008 Weber which of course can be written as eight by 10 to the negative three Weber, which of course can be expressed as eight milli Weber. That's example number one. Example number two, you can sometimes have a coil that's a circle rather than a square. Calculate the magnetic flux created by a magnetic field strength of 400 milli Tesla, passing through a circular frame of radius 10 centimeters. Now Tesla, a whole Tesla, a full one Tesla is actually a very strong magnetic field strength. So quite often in these questions, you will find hundreds of milliteslas or fractions of a full tesla. So let's have a look at this particular question. Again, we've got a magnetic field which is represented here by these dots coming out of the screen straight towards you. That's a notation we've learned earlier in the year for magnetic field strengths that are perpendicular to a surface. The dots mean it's like an arrow coming out of the page at you. So these magnetic field lines are in fact perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of this circular frame. So we can use the equation magnetic flux phi is equal to b times a so magnetic flux is question mark that's what we're trying to solve the magnetic field strength is 400 milli tesla which can be written as 400 by 10 to the negative 3 tesla the radius is 10 centimeters and of course we want to convert that into meters which is 0 0.10 now to find the area of a circular region we use area equals pi r squared so we use pi times the radius we just calculated 0 0.10 meters squared and that gives us a rounded area of this particular circular shape of 0 0.0314 meters squared. We use our equation, phi equals b times a, substitute our values in, and we end up with a magnetic flux in this arrangement of 0 0.01257 Weber, or scientific notation, 1.257 by 10 to negative two Weber, or as it could be expressed, 12.57 milli Weber. That's the answer for example number two. Example number three, Calculate the magnetic flux created by a square coil of surface area 0.4 of a meter squared when placed parallel to a magnetic field strength of 800 millitesla. 
So you can see here you've got your coil in blue and your magnetic field running parallel to it with the symbol B for magnetic field. So again, we're asked to find the magnetic flux. We have a magnetic field strength of 800 millitesla, which is 800 by 10 to the negative 3 tesla. And the area we have is 0.4 of a meter squared. But before you go any further, I hope some people have already realized this, because the magnetic field is parallel to the surface area of this coil, there is no flux threading through the coil. Therefore, the magnetic flux is a zero Weber. Just restate this. When the magnetic field lines are running parallel to the cross-sectional area of this coil, there is no lines threading through the coil. Therefore, the flux is zero. A trick question which comes up on VCAA papers regularly. Let's revisit this theory. So we know that the magnetic flux is a measure of the amount of magnetic field lines passing through an area. And up until this point, we've talked about scenarios where the magnetic field is either perpendicular or parallel to the cross-sectional area of a coil. There is a more detailed analysis of this particular equation, and this involves an angle theta measured against the magnetic field strength and the normal to the plane of the area. So the detailed equation that's used for magnetic flux is actually B A cos theta. Again, where phi is the magnetic flux in Weber, B is the magnetic field strength in Tesla, A is the area perpendicular to the magnetic field in meters squared, and theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the normal to the plane of the area. That's the variation that's new when we have a magnetic field in an area that are not parallel or perpendicular. It is worth noting that VCAA doesn't require students to use this equation to make calculations. However, students are encouraged to be aware that somewhere between a parallel field and area and a perpendicular field and area, there are variations of magnetic flux existing. A couple of scenarios to look at. Consider a square coil rotating clockwise 360 degrees through a vertical magnetic field. What would the variation of magnetic flux look like? So we have our starting arrangement here. In this situation, we've got a surface area that is definitely perpendicular to a vertical magnetic field. So here we have a maximum flux arrangement at an angle orientation of zero. If we rotate that a further 90 degrees where side length AB, which was in this location to the left, is now at the top of our plane of rotation, we find now that our coil and our magnetic field lines are running parallel to one another. So at an angle of 90 degree rotation, we have zero flux threading through this coil. If we rotate at 180 degrees, we find our side length A has moved from the left to the top, now to the right of our coil. And at this point, once again, we have a maximum magnetic field line threading through it. And so we have a maximum flux. However, to distinguish between this position at zero degrees and this position at 180 degrees, we refer to this orientation as a negative maximum. It's a different side of the coil being exposed. We rotate again, yet another 90 degrees, to a total rotation of 270. We see that our side length AB is right on the bottom of the coil. We're now to a point where our coil orientation, or rather surface area, is parallel to the magnetic field. And as such, we have a flux of zero. There are no lines threading through this coil surface area. And finally, back to where we began, another 90 degrees, we end up with side length AB on the far left-hand side, as we did at zero degrees. We now have a maximum flux threading through our coil, and so flux is a maximum, and it's considered a positive because it's in the same orientation as its original zero degrees arrangement. So this is the variation that we get from a 360 degree rotation of a coil within a vertical magnetic field. It clearly is a cosine function. And this is where we get our magnetic flux is equal to BA cos theta. Let's now consider a square moving a constant velocity to the right through a vertical magnetic field. What would the variation of magnetic flux, phi, look like? So here's our motion, constantly moving from left to right through that magnetic field. And I want to know what would a graph look like. So let's analyze, first of all, the change in magnetic flux as this coil moves from the very far left right up to the front edge of the magnetic field. So for that entire duration, there is no field line threading through this coil, so there is zero flux. The next phase in this particular transition from left to right, remembering that it is at a constant speed, we just happen to be stopping this for analysis sake, is when our coil moves from being fully out of the magnetic field to fully in the magnetic field. So as it moves, 
As soon as it starts moving in, some small amount of the magnetic field is threading through. And by the time it moves to the far right hand side, we find at this point, it is maximizing the number of field lines moving through that particular area. And so we go from zero in a linear fashion up to a maximum of our flux. This is the maximum flux that can cut through this particular cross-sectional area. For the remainder of this journey where the coil is moving to the right within the magnetic field, we have a constant maximum flux. Okay, the magnetic flux is constant for the whole time. There is a maximum amount of field lines threading through this coil. We now get to the end of this magnetic field. We go from a maximum flux, and as we move out of the field, we find our magnetic flux drops, eventually to a point of zero, where there are now no magnetic field lines threading through this coil whatsoever. And of course, from this point onwards, we have zero flux happening as well. I'm hoping this visualization explains a little bit more about variations of magnetic flux in time for an object that's moving from left to right at a constant velocity. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.